How do you deal with the pressure that comes with having a, a public image? Yes, yeah, so number one is just to know that you're never going to be ready. We all typically want to do good work and we want our work to be recognized. All human beings have that desire. Whether you're a gardener or a director in a listed company, you want the work you do to be recognized. And sometimes you get to a point in your life where the work is recognized by people outside your value chain. So it's not just your clients anymore, right? It's not just your staff, it's not just your competitors, it's broader society that recognizes the work that you do. And then society affirms that with giving you a certain public persona. It says, this is who you are. They call you something, right? Some sort of sage or nomad or, or whatever. And it's really easy then to want to be that which society says you are. When you didn't get there because that's what society said you were, you just did good work. Uh, so for me, how do you deal with having a, a strong public image? First is to remember that that image isn't you. It's a projection of what society has made of you, right? So Vusi was Vusi long before they called me what they called me. And it's really important to remember who that guy is and to stay true to who that guy is. Because the minute I try to live up to an image that is designed for me, an archetype, that is created for me by somebody else, I'm always gonna measure short. I'm always gonna come up short. I'm not that perfect. I'm not that guy. I'm a human being in a universal experience having a life journey making mistakes. And that's allowed. That's a part of the learning process. So that's the first thing I'd say. The second thing I'd say is to remember that um, there's, a, there's a famous movie, I think it's Wall Street, the first one. And Gordon Gekko is, is busy giving some mentorship to a character played by Charlie Sheen. And there's a part in the movie where the character is getting some recognition from his team members. And Gordon grabs him by the shoulder and he says, come here. And he says, do you look at them? And all of his friends are standing and clapping. He says, they're clapping now, right? And uh, Charlie Sheen looks at him with a big smile and says, yes. He says, let me tell you, they're dying to boo. Right. So it's... Um, I think it's a human condition. It's not even a South African thing, by the way. It's a human condition. People love it when you fail, but they really love it when you don't. And you've got to be careful not to let your journey be dictated by what people expect of you to do. So um, today in business, I'm winning as much as I'm losing. I'm succeeding as much as I'm failing. And those failures are important. They're important in the life journey. They're important in the experience so that I emerge on the other end a better person and I'm able to learn. And then the third thing I'd say is uh, one of the things that is a concern to me now is it seems to me in South Africa specifically, we've reached a point where you are not allowed an alternative point of view. You know, so if you are black and male or black and female, there is a point of view you must hold. And if you are white, you are not allowed to have a point of view about certain things. And I'm not sure when we got there. I'm not sure how we got there, but I am sure that if you study history, you will realize that every single time there has been a, an atrocity on a people, that's how it starts. It starts with somebody saying, you are not allowed a point of view. Freedom of speech is not freedom of popular speech. You cannot infer from the fact that I have the freedom to speak that you must like it. Those two things are not, they are not connected. Freedom of speech means my right to protect you, to hold of you, even if I don't like it. And it seems to me we've come to a point in this country where it is, I only protect the views that I like, and if I don't like it, rather than engage it, debate it, try to understand it, break it down so I can understand its core tenets, I'm just going to attack it. Um, and that's dangerous for me. That is, it's a very dangerous place. That, by the way, that's what the apartheid government did for many years. When you held a view that apartheid was wrong, they said, therefore, you're communist. Whereas what you were saying was, the social structure is wrong. You cannot infer that I'm a communist because I'm saying what you're doing is wrong. But because you were anti them, you were then therefore pro something else. And I think that's kind of where we are now. You know, you, if you are a black person, for instance, and you think that, I, for instance, I think capitalism is the least of all evil systems. I think. Now notice my language. I didn't say it's a moral system, nor did I say it's a perfect system. I said it's the least evil. So study history and you will recognize that the only way to truly give opportunities to the poor and disenfranchised is to allow them opportunity to compete in a capitalist market. Socialism doesn't do it. Now, capitalism is not perfect. 
And certainly pure capitalism wouldn't work in South Africa, which is why I don't belong to the free market foundation, because I do not believe that the free market system is a perfect system. It cannot be that you take a young person from Diepslut and ask them to compete with a young person from Hout Bay and, and think that in a free market system they're going to come up at, at a competitive level. It doesn't work that way. One has a structural disadvantage. So in that environment, a capitalist pure free market system would not work. So you do need some sort of social environment to give an opportunity to somebody who is disenfranchised. But in the long run, all else equal, given the same resources and opportunities, then you'll find that in a capitalist environment, you get better rewar rewards, better results, and better productivity than in other environments. History has proven it. Study what happened in Russia, study what happened in Cuba, look at what's happening in Venezuela. All you have to do is study what's happening in other parts of the world, and you realize that strong leftist systems, socialist, communist systems, do not deliver for the majority of the people in the medium to the long term. Very popular in the short term, but not in the medium to the long term. Now play this video, and I can assure you that there is a bandit of people who will attack it. But they will not attack my argument, they will attack me. And then they'll say, Vusi's an apologist, Vusi's done well in business. Yeah, sure, sure. But where were you when I was going to Vitz University, ending my tutorials at 7 o'clock at night, and then walking from Vitz University um, uh, to Park Station in town, and anybody who's done that walk at 7 o'clock at night will tell you that it's not a great walk to make. Then catching the last taxi that's left, making my way to Benoni Station, getting there at 9 o'clock and there were no taxis, walking from Benoni Station to home every single night for two years to get an education. Where were you then? Was I privileged then? Where were you when I started my first business and I was living in my car in my basement for seven months, not making enough money to put food on the table? Where were you then? Was I privileged then? Where were you when I was knocking on doors and not being given opportunities because of the color of my skin? Where were you then? Was I privileged then? So it's easy to look at a person and what they've achieved and discount everything they've achieved on you've been privileged rather than actually he's worked damn hard to get there. So I think it's important for me to say to people, don't let society's image of you become who you are. Stay true to who you are and always hold, keep dear the right to hold an alternative view.